Hey guys, it's Marissa back for another booktube video and today I am doing a book review on The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Adier. And I hope that's how you pronounce it because I have no idea. And look at this cover. Is this cover not like the most gorgeous thing in the world? I just, I love it. Love it, love it. Um, you know, people say don't judge a book by its cover, but honestly, most of the time, especially when I'm at like a discount bookstore or a used bookstore, that's what I'm judging a book on. Um, I'm just picking it up because it's pretty and then reading the back and going, oh, okay, I want to read this or okay, I don't. So, anyway. So, I picked this one up at a discount bookstore and I think it was like $2.99 or something. And um, I really didn't have a whole lot of high hopes for it. It was just something that like, oh, okay, it sounds good, you know, I'll, I'll read it. And basically what the whole premise is, is it's a retelling of A Thousand and One Nights with Scheherazade and how the, um, the king basically, you know, he marries these women and then at dawn he kills them. And Scheherazade is the only one who's ever survived and it's because she keeps telling stories that keep him so enraptured with her that he wants to keep her alive. So that's basically what this book was based on in the first place. And... It really does a great job of kind of weaving that story. I've never read A Thousand and One Nights, just FYI. So I honestly, all I've heard is hearsay about it. So I, I picked this book up not really knowing what I was getting into, but I would give it a solid four stars, honestly. It, it was very well written. I think the character of Scheherazade is is interesting even if it doesn't really go into a whole lot of depth about her. Um, I feel like you get to know her a little bit but you really don't get to know past a whole lot of surface stuff. Um, which is not, I mean, it, it is kind of integral to the story because that's why Khalid, who is the king in here, is keeping her alive is because he basically falls for her from night one which I, in all honesty, I think this book is more of a romance than it is a story. Um, one thing I will say is that there are so many characters in here, and they all have very traditional, like, you know, Arabian Indian names, and they they always address each other by, like, their full name, and it gets really, really confusing. Like, I had a really hard time telling the the side characters apart sometimes. I'm like, okay, wait, who is that? Because their names, I mean, obviously, American names, to me, are going to be easier because, you know, Jane Smith, Bobby, Jones, whatever, you know what I mean? So I can keep those kind of characters straight, but these names are very unfamiliar to me, so it was really hard to keep the side characters straight. And I understand why the author chose to go with, you know, referring to people by their full names, because obviously it, it must be some some kind of thing in their culture where that's what they do. It's a sign of respect to, to go, hey, Bobby, blah, 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 whatever. You know what I mean? So I, I get why it was integral for, for the author to tell the story like that. I just thought it was very confusing for me. So if you pick this book up, just make sure you pay attention because at some point you're going to be like, why is that person doing this? And then you realize that's not who the, who the author was talking about. So the other handy thing in here is that there is a lot of unfamiliar words. So they did put a, a glossary in the back of the book, which kind of goes, <clears throat> it really goes over a lot of the terms that are going to be unfamiliar to, you know, people reading this book in English. So, you know, I, I did refer to that a few times for the most part. I just kind of fumbled through it and was like, hey, I'll figure it out later or, or, you know, like I get the general gist of this. So I understand why all those things were done for the purpose of sticking to the the narrative and the culture that's in the book. Um, just be aware that it is a little bit confusing. On the other hand, I think I think the romance aspect of it was done pretty well. They do kind of gloss over the the sex scenes in the book. It's just it vaguely hinted at. It's not like a full in-depth. Um, so I guess that's a pro or a con depending on, on what you like as far as, as reading a book that's got some of that in it. Um, I do think the actual love, the love part of it was pretty, I mean, it, I guess it's pretty realistic for like a fast love story. Obviously it's involving royalty and you know, they generally don't marry for love. They, they marry to further their line and yada yada yada. 
Anyway, so I think the love story does pace out really nicely. Um, this is the first book in a duology, and I actually, I didn't think pretty much the entire book I didn't think that I was going to buy the second one um, and then I just ordered it on Amazon <laughs> so it'll be here Tuesday so I actually get to read that but yeah I really I picked this book up thinking okay this is one I can just read and get it off of my bookshelf and you know take it in for credit to the bookstore and you know I actually think I'm gonna keep this I'm gonna read the second one in the series and just see how it goes and whether it'll be worth it I mean the covers on these are absolutely gorgeous apparently these are the um, you know a second edition cover um, and the original ones were pretty too but these are absolutely absolutely gorgeous so yeah I like I said I give this book a four stars I thought it was great it's a great retelling story um, it's one of the best retelling stories that I've read in quite a long time so yeah definitely go pick this book up and I guess that's all I got for you hope you guys have a great night